Hi, this is a quick video to show off uh, some stuff I'm working on. Um, I've sort of been working on this project for a while on and off. Uh, I was never quite sure what I was going to do with it, um, but it sort of keeps getting further along. And so I figured I would put out a video to talk about it. Uh, essentially what it is is a mesh based workflow for Microsplat. Um, if you're not familiar with Microsplat, it's a shader generation system, uh, mostly used for Unity terrains. Uh, and what this does is allow you to use those same techniques um, on arbitrary meshes with some uh, restrictions. Some of the things that Microsplat does uh, just won't work on arbitrary meshes. Um, but uh, yeah, there were a lot of interesting problems to solve in this and I've uh, sort of gotten through most of them. Um, so I'm just gonna show it off and talk about some of it. And uh, if you have some ideas, uh, feel free to get in touch with me in the forums uh, and talk about them. So what I have here is this asset I downloaded from the asset store. Um, it's basically this um, head. It has a sort of standard shader on it. Um, you'll notice this UV seam in the back here, uh, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about. And what we're gonna do is paint some splat maps uh, onto this and, um, and talk about some of the different uh, ways we can do that. So the way we do it is we start with adding the Microsplat mesh component. And uh, this kind of works like uh, very similar to Microsplat terrains. Uh, basically you have um, your template material and per texture data, which is unassigned right now. And then um, there's a shader type here and you can create the shader and the material automatically. And there's three types here. And this really has to do with um, whether you're fully splat mapping the mesh or whether you want to keep the original material around. So if I set this to splat map mode, what that means is I'll get up to 32 textures to work with um, and I can paint them wherever I want in my model. If I set it to overlay, it's going to generate a special shader um, that allows me to keep the original uh, texturing around and then paint uh, splat maps over that and one of the splat maps will be sort of like an alpha channel. And then combined we'll generate a shader which has um, you know, a basic uh, sort of similar to the standard shader. It has like a diffuse map and a normal map, etc. Uh, built into the splat map shader and then still has a splat map. So um, the difference between th these though really is that um, overlay and combine sort of solve the same problem, uh, but overlay does it uh, a little more expensively in that it draws the object twice, um, but the upside is that you can use completely arbitrary shaders uh, underneath um, and this sort of works kind of like the train blending module does. And then what combine does is put them all into one shader. Um, the upside of this is that you don't have to draw the object once, it's a little faster. Uh, the downside is that it won't work with an arbitrary shader, it'll only work with the one that I'm providing included. Uh, and uh, the upside, another upside is that it can blend a little better between the two. Um, and it can do things like tessellate the original mesh. Um, so. Uh, which one you choose is sort of up to your workflow. I'm just going to choose a regular splat map, uh, splat map one for now. What I'm going to do is create shader and material. And then this will uh, ask me where to put the data. And so what I'm going to do is choose this new demo directory I made. Choose. And what this is going to do is set up uh, the basic shader uh, and material for uh, this object. And so it's compiling the shader there. And here we go. So now we have uh, a Microsplat shader and there's this new mesh workflow checkbox and it's set to shader type splat map. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is assign some uh, texture arrays to this. And I'm just gonna use the ones that are included in uh, Microsplat. So we're gonna get a diffuse one here and let's get the normal one here. There we go. Um, and we can set the tiling and, and sort of all the normal stuff we would, turn on features, etc. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to start with this. And then if we select the object here, you'll see that uh, right now it says in that area, it says, hey, we need to create some control textures for this. Uh, it looks at the texture array, looks at how many textures you have, uh, and decides how many control textures it's going to generate. So this works the same as the Unity terrain, uh, where you have the, the splat mat data stored in a texture. And so for every four um, textures that you have on the object, you need another control map. And, uh, you know, I have this currently set to 256 by 256. You can set it to whatever you want. Uh, but um, because these are uh, just control data, you can, act, you can go pretty low most of the time and be fine. So let's create the control textures. Um, it will ask us where we want to put them. And uh, once again, we are going to put them into this new 
microspot demo directory into this microspot uh, data directory created. So that'll set up our control maps, import them in. There we go. Um, and so you can see the control maps are assigned here. We have our uh, microspot material and our prop data all assigned. And then um, uh, we have our normal tabs for baking and debugging. Um, so you can bake out the final result of this uh, when you're done painting if you want to uh, do that. Um, okay, so let's go back to um, let's go to the uh, new painter window. So if we go to Microsplat, um, where are we here? Mesh painter. And I dock it over here, and so we can select our mesh or number of meshes, and now we have a new painter. And this painter has uh, texture-based brushes, which you can see here. And then here are the textures in our texture array. And we can select one of these textures. Um, brush a little bigger, maybe. And then here's our brush. And we can paint this onto the mesh. So fill it. And let me turn up the brush flow. Put the other one on here. We can paint. And you'll see that it paints right across the UV seams. Uh, that took a little while to solve. Um, you know, it's not going to, you can still have textures that don't line up because as a tile, they don't line up. Uh, but it will actually paint right across the UV seams uh, correctly instead of um, basically ending there, as I've seen some other uh, systems do. Um, so, yeah, so uh, you can use different brushes here that have um, different shapes. You see kind of a preview here. Um, of which you know the, the brush is doing as a rotation setting. So if you want to like rotate the brush around or you know make it huge and um, you know paint whatever on there, and you can drop new textures in here if you need new brushes, um, and you can adjust like the view size of these things if you want to like have bigger previews or bigger previews of your textures, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that's basically how the system works. Uh, again, it, it'll work with arbitrary geometry. Um, you do need a uh, all the UVs either laid out in a zero to one space or use the light mapping UVs. Um, so if you generate the light mapping UVs, they are uh, always going to be in a zero to one space and unique. And so you can use those as your um, UVs for the painting. Um, so yeah, and then the nice thing about this is because we have uh, all of Microspot available or most of it, there's some things that won't work uh, in this mode um, for various reasons. You can do things like turn on your tessellation and then it'll recompile the shader. And come on little laptop. There we go. And now we have a tessellated version of this mesh. Um, I'm sorry, the shader. And you can see the tessellation here. I think the arrays I have don't have height maps in them because they're crappy. So let me just choose a different array. That's what happens when you grab something randomly in a demo. Um, let's just grab this one. And I have so many arrays in here for testing. Here we go. Um, I see the tessellation working there. Um, blending those height maps. You probably want the mid bias. There we go. Take those harsh edges. Um, and yeah, and so all those techniques that are available in Microsplat uh, work. Um, there are some exceptions. Uh, for instance, uh, I support like wetness and, and streams and puddles and stuff, but I don't support the dynamic versions of those because those need a, a height map to figure out which direction the things should flow. Um, so uh, there are some restrictions, uh, which I will fully document. Um, but now if we go to our painter here, uh, we can go over to the wetness tab here and, um, oops, it's decided to import. And then we could actually paint wetness here uh, on our, our model. 
So, um, what are the upsides and downsides to this? Uh, there's the downsides really are that, um, you know, you have these extra control textures and you're really creating, uh, probably a heavier shader than if you just had a simple shader on it. Uh, but the upside is you get all this control. You can paint all these different, um, different effects and textures and things. And, uh, if you want to, when you're done, you can actually, uh, use the render baking settings, um, over here to bake out, uh, all your final maps and then put them into a regular shader. Um, and to do that, you just basically set an output path, you turn on everything or whichever ones you want, and then you hit export selected and it will uh, bake those all out to textures that you can, uh, combine and use for whatever shader you want. Um, or you could just use this in game if, uh, the speed isn't, uh, the biggest thing for you. Um, so let's talk about some of the other modes on this. Uh, if we go to our combined mode here, um, this will allow us to have a built-in shader for, um, for what this object looks like. So in combined mode, you'll see here that you have a mesh alpha index. Uh, and what this is, is, is which splat map is effectively um, transparent. So it's set to zero. And then we have a regular old albedo texture, which I'm just going to choose something completely ugly for, and a normal texture, which I'm going to leave blank for this test. And let's go to our painter here and select the first texture here, fill. So now we can see when we paint the first texture down, uh, that original uh, texture, which we slapped on here, is coming through. And if we select another texture and paint, we can paint, um, you know, uh, paint it over the top. So if you have like buildings and housings and things like that, that are, um, you know, they're uh, all set up uh, and you want to paint some stuff on them, uh, you could leave your original texturing there um, or rather use this shader, put in your diffuse maps and stuff uh, and, and then paint over them. Uh, the other thing you can do is this, um, overlay mode shader. Um, and what this does is it sort of works like the train blending where, um, here, and usually I want to set these up that way in the beginning so that it takes care of the setup. Um, but if we switch here to overlay, this will spit out a special shader, uh, which we can use to, um, uh, to basically overlay over the existing shader. So if you had, um, you know, some custom shader you wrote and you still wanted to splat map over it, uh, you could do this. It will cause multiple draw calls. Um, and uh, so it's, it's kind of heavy. Uh, but if you're drawing things through instancing and stuff like that, you can totally do that. Um, and let me just check out this guy real quick. So here you can see how the shader has alpha um, because it's just drawing an overlay uh, over whatever shader was underneath. And you'll see here that if I was to select my original idle material here, um, we have idle material and then we have the overlay shader here. And now what we see is that wherever we splat map, we're painting our splat map data. But if we go and we paint that alpha texture, it's going back to the original texturing. Um, and it's re go really going back to the original uh, shader that we have on there. So if you had some, you know, wacky custom shader that does something really cool, you can still use uh, this technique and uh, blend it over. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for now. I have a lot uh, more work I'm doing on this, um, but that's the basics of the workflow. And um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, potential things I could add to this. Uh, what I'm mainly focused on now is getting as much of the existing Microsplat uh, stuff working. Uh, for this. There are restrictions, of course, some things that will never work. Um, for instance, if we go over to the material here, um, right here, so most of these features are all going to work, like, um, you know, the shading uh, model you use, UV mode, uh, lighting models, stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, all this, like, oh, do I have emissive? Do I have height blending? Uh, do I have um, you know, detail noise or distance resampling, all the anti-tile stuff, uh, geo textures, you know, all that stuff is going to work, snow. Um, 
the things that aren't uh, is probably the dynamic stream stuff will probably never work. And then in certain modes, you can't use tessellation. And the reason that is, is if I have this on a shader that doesn't support tessellation, then it's going to draw it without the tessellation. And then when this model comes along uh, and draws the second time, it's going to tessellate it. And then the verts aren't going to line up. It's going to look weird. So if you have the combined mode or if you have the splat map mode, uh, tessellation should be fine. But if you're in this overlay mode, it will actually disable uh, the tessellation on you. Uh, because that doesn't really make any sense. Um, i trying to think if there are other particular uh, things. Um, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to support terrain blending. Uh, I can support it technically, but um, since, since the object you may be blending with is no longer a terrain, uh, you know, I can't uh, have it blend with it. Um, because I don't know where the terrain is to blend with. Um, but you could imagine having objects on here which are terrain blended with the terrain. So they're splat painted and terrain, terrain blended. So um, I have to kind of figure out which of those things I want to support and which ones make sense to support and uh, are possible to. Um, there's some other stuff that's going to be included in here. I have a very simple uh, terrain to mesh converter. Um, it's, actually, it's actually pretty cool. It will uh, take any number of terrains and it'll break them up into a number of chunks which you specify of a given polygonal resolution that you specify. And um, and so it'll very quickly convert everything and it'll convert your material over so that you're ready to work with it as a, a mesh. Um, people seem to really like converting meshes into trains. Uh, there are some use cases for it, um, but, uh, but yeah, so I included that in um, so you don't have to go spend 20 bucks for that. Um, Anything else that I want to talk about? No, I think that's it for now. Um, I don't know when I'm going to release this. I'm about to uh, take a bit of a sabbatical, uh, but I thought I'd put up this video to talk about it now, and if you guys have any feedback, uh, let me know. Thanks.